Hey my friends, it's Catherine from CatherinePooler.com. I've seen a lot of chit chat online lately about these babies. The Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I was resistant for a while because I have markers. I have water-based markers, I have Copic markers. So why do I need new markers, right? These markers are different and they made me excited. So I decided to try them out. And one thing that I'm seeing a lot is people saying like, how many should I get? and which ones because they have you can buy them individually you can buy them by the pack 12 I think 24 48 60 I think there's an 80 pack also um, you want my opinion <laughs> if you've hung around me long enough you know exactly what my opinion is I say go small to start out with because Historically, the crafting industry comes out with new products all the time, right? And then in another month, there's going to be something else that people are excited about, and you're going to feel like you're to, you need to buy that. It happens. However, you may love these, but start small, get a little sampling of them, and if you love them, you can buy more. I love that they have open stock. They're not very expensive. So I, the way I did it, um, I bought a 12-pack, and then I just filled in once I got the 12-pack and decided that I liked them. <laughs> I ordered open stock um, to fill in colors that I felt like I would use a lot. So I'm going to show those to you today and I'm also going to talk to you about cardstock for using these because my friend Laurel Beard, when she tried these the first, she was <laughs> poo-pooing them. <laughs> she did not like them at all. And what we realized was it was the cardstock that she was using. So now that she's using cardstock that works well with these, She's ordered more. Mm -hmm. She did. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, take a look at these markers. So here is the set of 12 right here, and it's a perfect rainbow with some neutrals. So black, gray, brown. Here is the brown right here, and the very first thing I tried to color with these, or one of the first things, was a cupcake, and this is not a chocolate brown. So that's why I got 065. It's a much better brown for chocolate or even wood um, so I think that might be the only color that I'm not crazy about in this whole pack but really great color selection so then once I started playing with them I decided I needed more so I kind of filled in my rainbow a little bit with some different colors I'll have this posted on my blog so if you're looking on YouTube make sure you go over to my blog so you can see see the color chart that I have um, let me show you some coloring let me pick out two colors here one thing that I love about these markers is that you can just oops, hold on Another little spot that wasn't fully embossed. Do you see what just happened here? As I was embossing that, it like bleached out the pen color. Isn't that the weirdest thing ever? All right, back to the back to the project. <laughs> so I have an embossed flower, and I'm going to color in with some pink and some orange. And then you'll see when I touch the colors together, they start blending. So that is the beauty of these markers. You can just blend right with the marker. So that is the two markers just blended together on Basil Marshmallow. Now I'm gonna do it on watercolor cardstock. And let me just color in all three of these at the same time. So this is the Bristol Strathmore and the Canson. The Canson and the watercolor Distress are both 140. So let me put them next to each other. And then the Bristol is 100 and the Basil Marshmallow is 100. Let's see how these blend on the Strathmore. Pretty good. And on the Distress Watercolor. A little bit harder to blend in the Canson. Canson's doing pretty good. Now I want to try a color combination that's a little bit further apart in color. So I'm going to do this bright pink with this really light yellow. So I'm doing full on yellow down here and then I'm going to start pulling in the pink. And then I'm going to bring like a scratch piece of paper here because see what happens is the color starts pulling into that yellow marker. And I want to get a good blend. So I have to kind of keep wiping off the marker. I 
And that blended out pretty well on the basil marshmallow. So let's try the Strathmore. Now there are many ways you can use these markers. I'm just trying one way today. I mean, I could do more, but then we'll end up in an hour long uh, <laughs> video, which uh, I hear some of you wouldn't mind. Bo, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Bo left me a message on Google Plus saying, quit cutting so much out of my videos and just make them full length. <laughs> and she was teasing me about having two minute long videos. The Strathmore really blends really well, almost kind of a little bit too much where I have to keep wiping off, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing over here, wiping off my marker to get that darker pink out. But look at that gorgeous blend right there. Maybe I should zoom out just a little so you can see. So that blended okay. This blended just perfectly. I am loving that one. So let's try in the Distress Watercolor, putting down the yellow first, putting down some pink right at the top, and then using the yellow to blend in that pink. And remember I told you Laurel was having trouble blending and it was on the Distress Watercolor cardstock. And um, actually this is working a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I have played around with these card stocks quite a bit and this blended out much more beautifully than any other try that I had. So the Distress Watercolor cardstock has not been my favorite, but I think it did really, really well right there. All right, now I'm gonna use Canson 140. Pretty similar to the Distress, I think. Same weight, watercolor cardstock, both of them. I'll start bringing that pink in. Clear out my tip. And that did pretty well too. The one thing that I was concerned about with these markers is I find with the Distress markers and the Spectrum Noir, I have trouble coloring directly on and blending out. So if I have to, you know, scribble off of my craft paper, grab my aqua painter, and then start coloring, I'm like, why don't I just use my ink pads, right? But these markers just blend beautifully right on the cardstock. I think um, the Strathmore is my personal favorite. But you can see on this particular trial, with these particular markers and colors, they all actually did pretty well. So now I added color again, just like I did on the first one, and I'm gonna blend it out with my aqua painter. And then we'll let it just dry and we'll see how they compare with that. I got a little bit out of the line there. Since these are water-based, they're gonna react with water and you get a beautiful blend. I'm trying to do them exactly the same. So these are drying and I will take a photo so that I can put this up on my blog so you can take close up looks. My theory is shot right now because my theory has been that the Bristol Strathmore is the best with these markers. But this little experiment right here, I think they all did fairly well. Um, I don't know, it's partly a matter of personal preference too. Do you guys have a preference? Leave me a comment either on my blog or on this YouTube channel and let me know if you think one of these looks better than the other. And actually on the Strathmore right here, I don't know if it's the way the water laid down or how it's blending or because of the paper, but this one actually is not blending as well as like say the Distress Watercolor. And that is so funny because um, Laurel had a lot of trouble with the Distress watercolor paper in these markers, so I don't know, it's kind of funny. Let me know what your experience is. I don't know if it has anything to do with humidity or, I don't know, I don't know. But overall, in all my experimenting, Bristol is my favorite. And then the other ones you can see, they work fairly well also. So I don't know if this helped you at all, but I had fun making the video and playing with you today. So thanks for being here. I'll talk to you again soon. Be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think.